What's up YouTube? In this video, we're gonna be creating sort of these uh, letter staggering animations, a couple different types here. This question came up in our Webflow Wizards Discord uh, group on how to create these effects. So I thought this would be a good uh, tutorial to try out today. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Webflow. I have these components previously known as symbols here, and we have this text inside of the link. So what I'll do is add a div onto the page. I'll give it the class of something like menu text wrap, and I'm gonna put the text inside that. So the text wrap needs to be set to position relative and overflow hidden so it crops off anything uh, outside of that wrap. And then we'll just go ahead and duplicate the text so we have two copies. And I'll go ahead and pull the content of that second text block from the same component field. Um, so that way, if I change the text it, in one place, it changes both of them. So the second text box here, we can give a combo class of is two, and we can go ahead and position it absolute on top of the first. So we just have two copies of the same text inside of this link. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing in, for this button here because we want to give it the same effect. It has completely different classes, but that's okay. I'll call it something like menu uh, text uh, wrapper. And I'll go ahead and set it to position relative, overflow hidden, uh, put this text inside of it. And I'll make another copy of the same text inside the text wrapper and give it that is two. And we'll do position absolute. So it's sitting on top of the first copy there and the wrapper is relative and overflow hidden. So that's working well here. The classes on these are completely different. So what we wanna do is set this up using attributes. Um, that way we can reuse this for multiple links throughout the whole site. It's not uh, class specific. So I'll select my link block here and give it an attribute. Um, we'll call it something like a uh, letter, letter or we'll call it hover stagger um, will be the name and the value will be link. And let's also give the text, um, we'll call it hover stagger and the value will be text. And I'll apply that same one to this. So hover stagger text. And then on this one here, we'll give it that hover stagger text. And on this one as well, hover stagger with a value of text. And the link block will have hover, star, hover stagger value link. All right. Um, so once that's set, we can go ahead and publish. And the first thing we're going to do is use sort of a jQuery each loop. Um, so that way we can loop through each of the links on the page. We want to create a timeline uh, for each of these. And I'm going to be using GSAP for this. So I have um, this uh, GSAP library in here to create the animation. I have the split type library so we can split the letters up into spans. And then I've linked up my code sandbox file. Um, so we want to loop through anything with the attribute. So to target by attribute, we add the straight brackets like this. And we're looking for the attribute of hover stagger. And we want a value of link. So we're looping through all of those links, regardless of what their class is. And actually before that, I will want to do sort of a um, span, uh, split text into spans right here. So I'll run this code. And we want to run this on the actual text element. So I'll go ahead and copy this. So we're going to grab everything with hover staggered text, and we want to split them into character spans like so. So we're looping through each of our link blocks. We need to find the text inside of this link block. Um, so what we'll do is say let text one, and we'll set it equal to the link block we're looping through and then we'll find the text inside of that link block and we'll do EQ zero. So that should get the first text block. And then we'll do text two and we'll do EQ one. So this will grab the second text block inside of the, each link. So we have the first and second uh, text blocks. Then we can go ahead and set up our timeline. So I'll say let timeline equal gsap.timeline and we want this timeline not to play on page load, so it's actually gonna be paused true. Um, so it's just paused, it doesn't play until we're ready for it. And then we can do TL and we can create sort of an animation. So we could do an animation on text one and that's the actual text block, but then we need to find the letters that are inside of this text. 
and those have the class of character. Um, so we'll do find and we'll find the character classes inside of that text one. And we can go ahead and animate them. And I'm going to animate them using Y percent. So on the Y axis, uh, we want to animate the characters inside this first text block to negative 100. So that'll pull them up. They'll slide out from the top. And then we also want to stagger them. So we can open up a stagger setting here. And we can do amount. And we'll have them all stagger over a duration of 0 0.2. So something like that. And we'll also probably want to give them somewhat of a duration, the actual letters sliding up. We can give them a duration of 0 0.3 for now. And I'll go ahead and copy that point on the timeline and add another point underneath. And then here we're going to be animating the characters inside text 2. And we want to animate them from um, a positive 100% on the y-axis. So they'll start down and out of view, and they'll slide up from that value uh, into view. And they'll have the same stagger. And we want these letters and the letters inside the first text to animate at the same time. So we're just going to add a comma zero here so that this point on the timeline happens at the start of this one. They happen together. And we need to play this whenever we hover over this link. So if we just go ahead and pull up a jQuery event, um, we want to just copy over this event here. We're going to say one hover of this link, the link we're currently looping through, we'll say on mouse enter. And we're going to grab that timeline and we're just going to play it. And then what we can do is say on mouse leave, whenever we hover out, we'll grab that timeline and just uh, reverse it so it plays backwards. Um, and this is happening when we're hovering over that link. So on page load, we're looping through each link that's on our page with this attribute name. And we're sort of grabbing the text one and text two inside of it, creating a GSAP timeline that's unique to each link, and then creating sort of hover in and hover outs for each link that play the related timeline. So if we save that and we go ahead and test this out, so we hover in, it slides up, and then hover out, it just reverses like so. So the, the letters inside the first text blocks are sliding up from towards the top. Letters inside the second one are sliding up from the bottom. And that's working well. If we wanted this to only play on hover in and not do anything on hover out, uh, we could comment out our hover out here. Just select it over it and hit command plus the forward slash key. And then here, if we leave it set to play, it will play um, the first time like so, but when we hover in again, nothing happens because it's already played to the end of the animation and it's over. So it's just picking up where it left off at the end. Um, but we can do dot restart instead, and that will make it restart from the beginning every time. So even if we've already hovered over this, we can still keep hovering in and it'll keep playing and we don't need to hover out. We can just trigger this animation when we hover in. And that's also working for this button, which has a completely different class um, all that's working great there. So let's see. I think that that's working good for that. We're going to go ahead and set up the second animation. So I'll just go ahead and copy this. And let me duplicate this page. We'll call this um, simple stagger. And I'll create a copy here, so that way, just in the clonable, we have this version plugged in, good to go. And then we'll create more of the second example next. So let me save that. Um, so for the other example, we're going to be doing the letter staggering from opposite directions. So if we go ahead and I have this sort of example set up here, just hidden just so we can see what's happening here. So we have this first text block here, um, and we have the odd characters and then the even characters inside of it. And then we have the second text block, absolute over top the first, and same thing, odd, even characters, like so. So we'll start with the odd characters inside the first text block. We want those to be down and out of view, so 100%, and we're going to move them sort of up to 0%, like so. 
at the same time we'll be grabbing the odd characters inside the second tag spot and they're going to animate from zero to negative 100. So that way both of them just kind of slide up and this whole box will be overflow hidden so we're only seeing one letter at a time. Um, so the default point for this odd character is going to be negative 100 inside or actually positive 100. So it needs to start something like this. So if we check this out, all these are going to happen at the same time. So we really don't need any kind of stagger for these, which is good. Um, but what we will do is we'll say text box one, we're going to find um, the characters inside of it and we're going to use inf child. So we'll say inf child and let's say we grab the odd characters inside the first text box. And I'm going to use from two animations for all of these, just so it's really easy to see where these are animating, what's the starting point and the ending point for these. So in the first text box, we said we want it to start at positive 100%, so it's down, and then we want it to slide up to zero, so it's in view and we see it. And instead of having them pass in this duration for every single point on the timeline, uh, we can actually use defaults in GSAP. So by doing this, every point on the timeline will have whatever we put here. So we'll say default duration of 0 0.3 and default ease of power to out. And if we need to change that, we can just change it from that one place so we don't have to include duration on this anymore. Okay, so that's text box one and that's the odd characters inside of it. Let's go ahead and grab text box two odd characters inside that one. So that'll be these guys here. So they're going to start at 0%. So they're going to start in view and they need to slide up to negative 100%. So they move up like this. Um, so we'll do negative 100 when the odd character is inside the second text box. And then we'll move on to text box one even characters. And if we check that out, so that is this one here. It's going to start at zero and it needs to move the opposite direction. So it's going to slide down to negative 100. So if we look at that, it'll start at zero or sorry, positive 100 would be pushing it down. Um, negative 100 pulls it up. So that works for the even one. And then we have the even ones inside the second text. So they'll start by, and that's inside text two, evens. They'll start being pulled up by negative 100%, which is what they are right here, and they'll slide down into 0%, like so. All right, so let's go ahead and save that, and let's see if we preview that, how that looks. Um, let me make sure I have this right. Um, so we're seeing text one. We're grabbing the odd ones. We're moving it from positive 100 to zero. Oh, the thing that need, that I have missing here is these all need to happen at the same time. So we'll do comma zero after all of these. Um, so let's see. There we go. All right, I'm going to slow it down just so we can really see how that's looking. Um, let's see. Yeah, so you can really see the letters kind of going opposite directions there. And that even works for this button here. Um, cool. And then that amount, uh, we're not using stagger. We don't have to worry about amount there. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and save this option uh, when I make this clonable as well, just so we have that. And yeah, we got two different sort of staggers. I'm sure there's a lot of different things you can make with this. Uh, maybe applying rotate to the letters or I don't know. There's definitely a bunch of cool stuff to do, but the basic structure of it would be something like that. Um, so yeah, awesome. Thanks, Noah. Great to see you on a stream. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Um, looking through to make sure there's no questions I missed. It looks like we're good. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and release the clonable for this. Thanks for sticking around and